Tomorrow, February 28th, 2017, Torment, Tides of the Minera is going to be officially released after a four-year development process kickstarted by one of 2013's biggest scoring Kickstarter projects. So before we dig into Torment, let's not forget that this is the spiritual successor of one of the most lauded computer role-playing games of the past two decades. Let me tell you about Planescape Torment. In the wake of computer role-playing games revival in the late 1990s, initialized by Baldur's Gate, a whole slew of games using its isometric Infinity game engine and based on the second edition rules of Dungeons & Dragons were released. Whereas most of these games were using the more common high fantasy settings, one game stood out by using the rather obscure Planescape campaign. The Planescape setting revolves around the idea of blowing up the more traditional fantasy settings and zooming out to reveal the cosmology of the existing Dungeons & Dragons universe. It is centered around the city of Sigil, the fabled city of Doors, which connects all other known and unknown campaign settings of Dungeons & Dragons. It is a setting where demons and deities cross paths casually with simple beings and where the power of thought is able to build worlds. The different planes are accessible via hidden portals that can be opened if you have the right key for it. These keys can be anything, an object, a person, or even a memory or a tune you hum at the right moment. Planes follow the generally accepted alignments of Dungeons and Dragons, from chaotic evil to true good and all possible combinations, and a slew of factions in Sigil fight for governance of the planes and the portals. In Planescape Torment, the player, which you get to know as the Nameless One, wakes up in a mortuary, devoid of any memory, an amnesiac. Very quickly, he is joined by the first of many companions. Morty, a flying, feisty and borderline sexually perverted skull, testimony to the outlandish and rather mature nature of the Planescape setting. Together, they set out to find out what happened to the Nameless One. More than a role-playing game in its classical sense, where the player is most of the time on a mission to save the world or a damsel in distress, Torment is a journey of initiation for the Nameless One. Over the course of the game, the player will find out that the Nameless One is in fact immortal and that his immortality is both a curse and a blessing as each resurrection erases the memory of the lives lived and actions performed. But there are clues and rumors of the price that the Nameless One had to pay to become immortal, and sometimes ruthless actions he'd perform to maintain this status quo. Torment is the discovery of how a man came to be a demigod, and the search of how the Nameless One must come to terms with this quest, lest the planes may be unraveled by his very twisted existence. What can change the nature of man is the question that is constantly asked by the game. The game itself plays on beautifully hand-drawn isometric backgrounds with equally beautiful animated characters. Remember, this was still the turn of the millennia and 3D was still in its infancy and not mainstream. But Red Torment really elevated itself apart from its wacky settings was the sheer amount of dialogue in-game. Even though the Nameless One starts off as a fighter class, the game shines if you choose to give him high intelligence and wisdom. As a matter of fact, most of the confrontations in the game can be solved by intelligent dialogue. Your companions will gain experience if you talk to them and unlock memories. In sync with its introspective main quest, a great deal of psychology and exploration, much more so than fighting, will be the main source of hero advancement. This goes into insane detail in some occurrences. For example, if you choose to respect to a mage class, and yes, you can respect as you see fit once you find the corresponding teachers, you will come upon an artifact in one of your companion's inventory. Unlocking the mysteries of this artifact is kind of a sub-quest in itself, and will give you experience, new spells, improve the stats of the corresponding companion, which in turn will open up new dialogue choices with him, which in turn will give your character new insights on his quest. Circles within circles within circles of content to discover, and easily looked over for the casual player. Other example of this intricacy, there's a subquest dealing with the rescue of an NPC who will join your party upon release and actually be one of the best companions of your party. Again, a very easily overlooked component. Talking about the storyline would be a terrible spoiler. It needs to be experienced. You have to play it at least once if you are in any serious way into computer role playing games. However, Torment is not for everyone. There is a lot of reading involved. At its time, with over a million words of dialogue, it was the most text-intensive game on the market. Also, the setting might be off-putting for people that are more into the traditional fantasy thing of elves, dwarves and dragons. But personally, I think it's one of a kind of a game. A story of self-discovery, comparable to Ultima 4 Quest of the Avatar. 
and I can't wait to get my hands on its spiritual successor that comes out tomorrow. Watch this space for a full let's play.